we are going to show you how to prepare a dangerous goods air shipment using a US specification 4G fiberboard box. Let's imagine we would like to ship four metal recipients containing each five liter of paint, UN number 1263, with packing group 3. By checking blue pages in the IATA manual, it is possible to determine which packing instruction must be used. The packing instruction Y344, for limited quantity, allows 10 liter maximum per package. If we want to follow this instruction for our 20 liters, we have to split the content into two different packages. This instruction does not require a UN specification package, but the shipper is responsible to verify that the package can withstand drop and stacking tests. To make sure the package is able to withstand mechanical shocks and vibrations during transport, it is preferable to use a UN specification package. The instruction 355, valid for passenger and cargo aircraft, requires the use of a UN specification package with a maximum of 6 liter per complete packaging. Analyzing this packing instruction, we verify that metal inner packaging is not exceeding 10 liters and UN 4G fiberboard box as outer packaging are allowed. Consider that you can't use any kind of 4G, but you have to choose one eligible for your specific inner packagings. The best situation would be an outer packaging tested with the same inner containers we would like to use. If this is not the case, we could replace the inner packagings with those declared in the test certificate. But this is not always an easy option. Request the manufacturer to produce a specific test certificate for our inner packagings. And this is a good solution for regular and frequent shipments. It is also possible to use inner packagings of equivalent or smaller size, but with similar design, with same or major resistance to impact and stacking forces, with same or smaller openings, and with additional cashoning material to take up void spaces and prevent movement of inner packagings. This last option is permitted by all transport regulations, but the shipper is fully responsible to demonstrate that the inner packagings used are effectively allowed. In addition, in all of the above situations, it is also necessary to verify through the test certificate that the packaging has been tested for the specific mode of transport required. Now let's imagine we have a 4G packaging tested with our metal inner containers. Let's see how to prepare the shipment. In each inner packaging you have to provide sufficient ullage to ensure liquid expansion caused by temperatures. Closures must be securely held in place so to prevent any accidental release. For the air transport of flammable liquids of packing group 3, it's requested to have the inner packagings able to withstand an internal pressure which produce a pressure differential of not less than 75 kPa. The fiberboard box must be assembled applying adhesive tape at the bottom, as prescribed by the test certificate. For the air transport of liquid dangerous goods, if the outer packaging is not leak-proof and the inner packagings are not equipped with an additional safety device to prevent accidental opening, then a liner or any other means of containment in case of leakage is mandatory. You will proceed then inserting the inner packagings, keeping in mind the right orientation. For safety reasons, you have to eliminate any possible air hip within the plastic bag. The plastic bag must then be closed with adhesive tape or any other equivalent system. To complete the package, the fiberboard box must be closed 
applying the adhesive tape with dimensions and features specified in the test certificate. The packaging must be weighed to verify that the maximum allowed gross weight is not exceeded. You must be careful to consider the right reference weight. Since uh, this could be different depending on the types of internal packaging used for the certification test. In our case, having used metal cans, the maximum acceptable gross weight is 26 kilo. Next step will be marking and labeling. You will apply the hazard risk label for class 3 and you will mark your number, proper shipping name and naming addresses of shipper and consignee. The orientation arrows mandatory for liquid in combination packagings are already marked on. For the air transport, in addition to the airway bill, a shipper's declaration for dangerous goods form is required. You need to enter the name and addresses of shipper and consignee and the number of pages. Delete the non applicable aircraft type as per packing instruction chosen. Delete the word radioactive. Enter your number, proper shipping name, class number, packing group, quantity and type of packages, and packing instruction. Emergency telephone number and all information about the signatory. That's it. For more details, we invite you to enter in the SERPAC website.